Friends, hello, everyone. Andre Novoselov is on the line. We are with you in the very center of the capital of our country, in the city of Heroes, Moscow. What's it all for? To do a review and find out the whole truth about the franchise No Drum, Guitar, Vocal and Hit School. We find out if a budding entrepreneur 18 years after the army can become a millionaire? How does a plumber or pregnant mom become an entrepreneur? Understand how to start a business if you don't have business experience. How to start a business if you have no money and no investment. How to open your own school in Turkey or Mexico. Watch out. Today our hero is Tatiana Bibik, and I'm going to go meet her. Tatiana, hi. It's good to see you. You and I have known each other for five years. And for three years you and I have been planning the filming of this video. What's it all for? In order to tell our viewers the whole truth about the franchise not drum schools. It's good to see you. Let's hug it out. That's for me. Thank you for the flowers. I made you some flowers. They're delicious. I'm very fond of flowers. Me, too. 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 They're flowers from you. They're very beautiful. Just the way you like it. Thank you. Go ahead and tell our viewers about yourself, please. Name a few facts. Or make the audience realize who you are now and a few words about yourself. My name is Tatiana Bibik. I am the co-founder of the largest network of music schools in Russia and the USSR. And we're second in the world. I hope to be the first soon. Last year's revenue in our network was 1.5 billion rubles. And we've already made over a billion in this one. We have 216 schools open. These are offline schools where we teach people how to play drums, guitar, vocals. And now we have opened a children's direction, children's schools. I come from the small town of Dzerzhinsk. It's in Belarus, there's 30,000 people there. A normal, totally normal family. My mom's a saleswoman, my dad's a former policeman. And I'm also someone who is constantly thinking about whether to be a super entrepreneur and build a billion dollar company or be a kept woman like any girl. I always have these thoughts. How did the name, Neskul of Drums, come about? The most frequent question I was asked was why Neshkola? Tell me, please. Anton, my partner, came up with the name. It very much reflects what we actually have going on. We teach adults and children now, including music, but we do it in a cool, fun, out-of-the-box format. We have kids on Salfaho, which is also called non-Salfaho, looking for some superheroes, rescuing someone, collecting comic books. Grown people come in, they have jokes, memes in their presentation. They play the drums right away. First their first songs at their first trial lesson, six months later they play their concert. And for the same thing we are still very often heckled for, that yes, they do and don't teach. So we have, Neshkola, right in our name. We don't want to be these boring, stuffy teachers who work 10,000 hours and only then, after a year, do we let you behind the rig. People come for other things. I got it right, school is boring. School is about learning a lot, suffering, and you're about fun, about drive, about emotion, and you're the opposite. You're not school, you're something cooler. In fact, a school can only consist of the front desk. You and I are here. Here's the receptionist. Here's the administrator. Here we have the second person working, and the trial lesson room. But in children's school it is important, part of it is the playfulness. Let me show it to you too, because it's important for us to have a very cool atmosphere in the children's school. Here's actually our kids hanging out with the teacher by the hand, and that's the important part, immediately embarrassed. Here, you see, there's room to climb, a big space. There is a couch here too, a TV so the kids can watch the swings. In general, we try to make a classroom space where kids want to stay. Come on, I'll show you the heart of interschool all the time. This is a classroom where classes are held, primarily trial classes. This place has all the tools in a children's school. There's piano, there's drums, there's guitar, there's even Superman. What's Superman here for? We always decorate every three months in some style. Right now we have the style of Superman, superheroes, so everything is in that style, and comics too. There is a TV here, as there is in every classroom, because the teacher only teaches lessons in a presentation. Let me show you generally what's in the whale. This is the first level of reels. We definitely have everything on a level here, her level of sophistication. We've got the most essential topics a young drummer will need right here. Every topic of these is detailed and detailed. There is an explanation, and there is a practice. You go into the explanation, it's there for the teachers, it's there for the student, everything is already there. You can just watch and start practicing already. When you've got it all nailed down to the notes, just metronome counting, you can play it necessarily to the music. We have a must-have musical performance for every assignment. 
we have almost all of our sheet music interactive like this. That is, the presentation itself tells you where to play. And that's really cool. You and I are in an unusual place right now. We're in the center of Moscow. And we're near the conservatory. Why are we meeting here? Tell me, please. First of all, my partner Anton, co-founder of the Conservatory of Music, studied here. He studied percussion here for seven or eight years. Across the street is a cafe where he made me an offer to come work with him Europe initially. An offer to be a business partner or a marriage proposal? No, the head of sales. I see, I see. A frequent question for sure that came up for you at the startup. Together as partners are you business partners or are you a couple together? Here to answer for our viewers. We're business partners. Wow, 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 wow. It was good. I liked it. Let's talk about Anton. Can you tell us, please, under what circumstances did you meet? I came as a student a month and a half after Anton opened the drum school. My first one in an old factory that didn't even have heat. I went there as an apprentice. How did you see the ad? How did you end up here? Here's the technical fact itself. How did you get into Anton's class? Just on Contacta saw an ad in some group, come to a free trial drumming lesson. Did you want to try it? I had that thought somewhere. I realized I had the day off, I had free time. And overall it would be nice and fun. Understood. And what did you see? Do you remember your first feelings and emotions on the day you saw Anton's non-school for the first time? Uh, sure. At first, as I walked, it was an old abandoned factory. Anton met me. We walked for five minutes, somewhere smoky on the premises. I thought, gee, I sure don't like this much. Maybe turn around. Yeah, leave already? Yes. Well, I'm brave enough, but I tensed up a little bit. Then when the lesson started, gosh, I fell endlessly in love right away because what happens in a free lesson, the extent to which we get people in love with music, and the feeling you get and the drive you get after a trial lesson, you know, you've tried it. Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. So, of course, I bought a season ticket right away. We had a month and a half then. A month and a half later, we played a concert. Meet our partners Olya and Stas. The boys have already opened two schools with us. The first one in Korolyov, a small town. What's the population there? About 250? 280,000 population. How long have you been open? Four years. Four years ago. And now they opened kids' school a couple months ago. I promised to tell an interesting story about a pregnant mom who was opening a school in the process. What month were you in when you opened your first school? On the 5th, I think. Five months pregnant. And Tatiana told me that when you opened here, this is your second, right, school? Second kid's school. You were pregnant again. Is there some kind of symbolism here? Is this some kind of sign? I really hope not. We do because we want more grand. Ten schools to open. But we've had enough kids for now. We already have three. You said you want to open ten more schools. What direction will it take? Will it be drums, will it be kids, guitar or vocals? Well, we're several directions. Of course, we want to open all the schools in Korolyov that we have. We only have drums right now. Three more. Three more, yes. More guitar, vocals and kids. And naturally, we'd like to open more, well, at least schools. Five to six. Five to six in Moscow, children's. To ask her, I hope. Tell me about the revenue. What is your average revenue per month in Korolyov first, in one drumming school? Well, the average is somewhere around a million plus all the time. We've never fallen below a million. Well. The average is somewhere around a million three hundred, a million two hundred. You're very cool, of course. And this, by the way, for four years. You said four, didn't you? For four years. An average profit margin of 30% somewhere, probably, right? Well, 30 to 40. 30 to 40%. You are so embarrassed to say that we have more of something, but in fact we have a lot more. But let's dwell on that figure. At the kids' school, what's the average revenue per month? Well, the average is probably somewhere around 3.8, somewhere around 3.7. We're in that 3.6 to 5 range. That's about as warm as it gets. You made, I think, 4 million on your second month with us, right? Yeah, for 20. No. In the first month, we did 4 million in 20 days. Everybody, excuse me, the profitability here is generally in the order of 40 to 50 percent. So far, yes, we marvel at this figure, at the truth, yes. Friends, I'm going to introduce you to our little hero. Her name is Kira. Kira goes to unschool kids here and is studying. And Tatiana, of course, couldn't pass it by. Started asking her some questions. So we got to talking and decided to ask Kira how she likes or dislikes it here. Tanya is about to ask her questions. K-I-R, tell me, do you like studying with us? Yeah, I like it a lot. 
I like it because you have a TV here, you have drums. I love music in general. What do you do here, by the way? I do vocals and drums. What's your favorite? Vocals. Vocals. What do you think of our teachers? The teachers are very well liked. They high five all the time and laugh. Do they give you a nickel? Yes. Would you play something with them? Some games? Something? Yeah, well, my drum teacher and I used to play soccer. We took a break and started playing. And with the vocal teacher, there's all sorts of games in the program. And that's how we play. That's cool. Do you come to our place often? Yeah, basically. To be honest, I don't know my schedule because my mom handles my family. Kier, please tell me, I'd like to ask you a question. Here you are when you first came here. When you saw and you ended up here at Meshkel, who made the decision to come here, you or your parents? You decided and your parents were supportive? Yes, Tatiana. Please tell us what steps you need to go through in order to open your own drum, vocal, guitar or, as in our case, kids Meshkola. Step number one is to get approved. My partner Anton and I still interview each partner ourselves. Last month, for example, we conducted 200 interviews. Wait, please. So you're talking about you're interviewing a partner and I, as a potential franchise buyer, will come and bring you money and put it on the table and you won't sell me? You of all people have seen us do this all the time. But do I have to ask these questions for my viewers? Money is being given, maybe you should consider it after all. But no, on average our approval rate is now 20%, maximum 30% of everyone who comes in. And yes, we say no, because we believe that's generally the main foundation and the reason why we continue to grow, grow fast, with a strong community, with strong partners. We say no to a lot of people. The question arises, what criteria should a partner possess? Professional criteria, perhaps? Maybe some other criteria for becoming your partner and opening your unischool? The first major quality is ethical. We only take the ethical ones. We don't take toxics, skeptics, and other guys because we have to be comfortable and high. Work is a big part of my life, and I should enjoy it. And the people who come to us should feel the same way with us. The second is hard work. People must be willing to work from morning till night. I don't know of any businesses where that's not the case, especially on stars. They need, moreover, to figure out all the processes at once, so that's the second point. And the third thing is that ideally they should be inclined to be able to sell, because sales aren't just to students, they're everywhere. The team, everyone else, we have a very drivable, cool product. You have to be easy to talk to people, easy to talk to the student, easy to talk to the parents of the kids if you need to. So it doesn't have to be something very scary for you. And no professional skills are needed. Opening a school, we had cases. You remember Lesha from Podolska, just an electrician. Olya now, they were working somewhere in space, something with electronics, I think. Fedya is from Rostov. You know he just got back from the army. Generally green, he doesn't have any professional experience. No, he was 21 or something, by the way. But he opened and immediately from the second month 500,000 net in Rostov. And the 18-year-old is Camille, he was 17 at all. He opened in Voronezh and made money right away, too. So professional experience doesn't matter at all. The most important thing is that the person is willing to work and follow the steps we talked about. Tatiana, I have a question for you. I know that when you opened the first kid's school, especially in Moscow, or rather, it was not the first, but the first in Moscow, you had a careful choice of which partner to open with here. Why did you choose Olga and Stas? Well, because the guys are making incredible numbers in Korolyov. Doing over a million in a small town is actually a very steep performance, also in the long run. The second is that the guys are super ethical and have shown themselves to be just that during this time. I was wondering how much you are working a week at the kids' school right now? For the first three months we were pretty tight here. We opened this school with the superintendent. That said, for the first three months we were there every day, morning to night. Now that it's already lined up and we have a manager that we're confident in, we're going to be working somewhere around probably seven to eight hours a week. That's what it was worth talking about. In fact, when the partners get more schools, specifically in the school they work less, but the first launch is something that the guys said, you've been working morning to night for three months. And many are delaying this moment, afraid or just don't want to, lazy. It was such a super step for the guys. Let's go to step two, understand what we need to do with step two. In the second step, we have the money raising stage. Most people go in without having any funds of their own. They have zero or so in their accounts. I'm going to have to clarify here. If I don't have the money right now to start my uni school, and by the way, 
How much money does it take to start drums, vocals, guitar or kits? Let's stop there. 2.5 to 3 million. It takes more to open up the kits. An average of 5 to 4 million invested. Depending on the city and the volume of schools, we have three different models. If I don't have the money right now at the moment, I can still partner with you. How does it work? We have our first list of investors who are willing to invest. These are people we know, people the partners know. Our own partners who have developed money but don't want their own school yet. They recently opened but are looking to expand. These are our employees. If you remember, you were the first to invest, and in two schools. Now we have a recent investment from our HR director Alicia, who you have seen. And some of the other guys on our team invested. It's actually a great indicator of trust when your team is willing to invest in the business. And often we find that our franchise is bought by our wives, our mothers-in-law, our co-workers, our friends and our significant others. And in general, the very fact, the indicator of selling them a product speaks of great trust. Tatiana. You're a big international network of music schools now. From Vladivostok to Mexico, you now have hundreds or probably even thousands of employees. But that wasn't always the case. Please tell us your journey. How did you become an entrepreneur? That's right, just a regular girl from a regular family. My mom's a salesman, my dad's a former policeman. And there were difficulties in the family, as there are for many, I think, these days. My dad's an alcoholic, I've had all kinds of consequences. And I've always wanted a lot of money in that regard. I wanted to be rich, not dependent on anyone. Famous, famous among other things. To add to myself whatever I want and never ask anything from anyone, never depend on anyone. And I decided that entrepreneurs have the most money, so I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Started in ninth grade reading all sorts of business books. The story of different successful people. Watching the video, then there was Vladimir Dovgin talking about if you want a business, you have two options. Either you are talented and you bake bread, for example, you open a bakery. Either you work very hard and then they give you a share of the business because you become indispensable. As you realize, I had a second choice. So everything you have now is for money and some kind of independence? That's the way it is. All for the money, because I think that's a perfectly normal base motivation. When you don't have enough to eat the food you want, to travel, to live, it's okay to earn for the sake of it, to provide that level. It's impossible to switch immediately to another, at least I think it's very difficult. And immediately think of some big, huge mission. I needed to shut down my needs. That said, for some reason it's always been important to me to do honest, cool, ethical product. I realized that some scheme I was never going to do. Now you're a co-founder, but you've worked different jobs and different professions. Who were you? What was your formative path? I've been selling flowers since I was 12 years old, handing out flyers. I used to carry, we had this theme in Poland, stuff, clothes. Moving it and then selling it. I was organizing a business in my dorm. I sold paper because everyone needed something to print. I remember I ordered, bought four huge boxes of paper and tried to get them myself. I did have some help. I've worked as an assistant, an accounting assistant, an entrepreneur. I worked as a remote assistant for a Moscow entrepreneur. And that's actually why I was invited here after my fifth year. I was still working in the foreign economic department, as a specialist in international relations at a factory that manufactured automobile parts. In short, a bunch of stuff was pre-business. But this business is my first and only one. I read on your blog that you kept a journal and wrote down your thoughts. And you wrote there. I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I made an entry in my journal. And it's like you were recently going through and found this journal. Tell me, please. Yes, it is. I had a notebook where I wrote down all the smart thoughts I had about business, about success. That's just ninth grade. And there was a line that said there were two options. And one of them is to work hard and you'll be given a share. Spoiler. I was given a stake in a big business and invited to work there. Okay. Can we move on to step three? Yes, the third step we have is to find premises and renovate afterwards. We tell the partner step by step where to look, how to look. He has a mentor at this stage who helps. And who pushes him out of his laziness, because when you've walked around the city, you're too lazy to do it the second day. I thought you looked at all the ads. We give more tools and continue to motivate the partner to look for a room. On average, this stage now takes us three to four weeks. In the past it could take up to two months, but that's rare, the location is very difficult. When I was in inner school, I heard most of the partners, not that there were any more, there were partners who complained that it was the drums that were hard to find in the city. Why? Because it is noisy, the number of rooms that have these specifications was not enough. 
Do I understand correctly that with a guitar, with kits, there are no such problems right now? Plenty of room, take it, open up. Look, the truth is, there's always a problem. And the issue of drums. The drums are finding us fast now, too. Just lazy ass partners. You went in, you looked at it, there doesn't seem to be anything. The buildings are basic, you looked at it on cyan, and that's kind of it, you're sitting flat. We've changed the process a lot now at the expense of the curator. Both drums, guitar and vocals are equally quick to find. Of course, it's a little easier on the other instruments. I think we can move on to the next step. The next step is to repair and train your partner. Parallel to the renovation, he studies for a week and watches absolutely all the training. Marketing, the way we have it set up, explores all channels. We now have over 30 channels on the year course. Naeem and everything else, I mean, he's immersing himself in our system, learning all the tools. Anya is our methodologist is amazing. Head of the department, she is responsible for what happens on a year-long course. All training for partners, employees. Anya, you've been with us for about a year and a half. Exactly one year, exactly one year. How many lessons did you get to create in a year? Over a year, over a thousand. Crazy. What do we have on the platform in general for partners? What are the blocks there? What do we teach people when they come to us? The first block is the all-important information. Our planners, signage, company order. And then the key learning is calling, selling, marketing, naming. Training on installments, product training, how to do an internship. For all processes, we try to describe everything. The next step we move on to is Naeem. In two weeks, together with our HR team, we launch Naeem. They have metrics, how many calls they have to make, interviews, where to place, it's all there. And then there's our HR supervisor too, who listens to their interviews, reviews the funnel. If something rides somewhere, he looks at why that is so, where the mistake was made. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt you here. I definitely remember very well that when I was selling the bottom of the drum school franchise, everyone told me, there are no teachers in my town. Not in my town, they don't. How are you closing that pain right now? Do potential partners ask this? How's that going now? They always ask, but, again, there are a million ways. Especially with our HR director, we learned how to close in any city this vacancy. No one says it's easy, but the reality is that administrators are even harder to find than teachers. Because the teacher, he comes in, he at least knows how to play. Yes, the next thing to work on is charisma, getting him to learn scripts, flavor to his groin, looking good and stuff. But administrators usually come in with no experience at all, they don't know anything, and we train them from scratch. That's why it's okay to figure it out. Oles, our HR director, has been with us for a year and a half, well, not a year and a half either. How many people did we hire last month? I found out that figure yesterday, and to be honest, I was pretty surprised myself. 28 people, which is twice as many as there were in May. Twice as much? How many total people do we have in the company now in the management company? 114. 114. Across the entire network, if anything, we have over 2,000 people currently working for us. In terms of musicians we start with 300 messages, that's the top of the funnel, from that we collect about 35 to 40 people. We have a little less people coming in for interviews, 5 to 10 less people. In the end, we bring out about 15 to 20 people for internships, and then we bring 6 people into the staff. We have a team, moving on to the next step. After that, it's the first day of the opening, it's the launch itself. We have a separate discovery team that is responsible for money, for revenue. They have KPIs on how much money the partner will make and whether they will make the plan. Our plan has grown, more than a million from the first month, the partner has to do. And so I was just watching the team report yesterday, we had absolutely every city open last month with those numbers, small, big, everything. From the cities, 13, 13 schools opened. If I want to invest now, to open my non-school, over what period of time will I get my money back? How long will my payback period be on average? 6 to 12 months. And tell me the coolest case study, how long did it pay off in terms of money? Look, well, Korolyov paid off for us in 2.5 months, Novosibirs paid off in 4, well, there are a lot of cases where it took 2 to 3 months. Keith purchased 3 months in advance from the guys. Let's have a provocative question, longest payback period? I'm thinking 2 years, probably for sure, maybe 2.5. You know we have cases where a partner opens up and can't, they don't get bad results, and then there's a sometimes long process of reselling, finding a new partner. Am I understanding this correctly? That you're in a case, if a partner opened up, and he's not doing so well, the strategy is still this. It's about the partner. By replacing his partner, resold the school to another person, in fact, and the previous partner can get some of his money back, and a new partner to implement at the same location often school, and is making good progress. 
The same? Yes, that's right, we have more such cases, we started to buy out more, because there is a separate special forces, they are the strongest partners, there are 40 to 45 of them at different times on the radio. It's the SWAT business, it's not guys in masks with machine guns, it's the wrong ring. It's a business specialty, some of them have 10 schools already, some have 5, but all more than 2, and they often buy out partners of weaker schools. For example, Volsky, if you remember, we had a partner there, he spent 2 or 2.5 years puking up the proceeds of 200,000 rubles, he couldn't sell to anyone, he bought a partner from Volgograd, do you know how much he made? No, the first month, how much, more than a million rubles at once, wow, that's cool, in Volsky, right away, you know, and we have many such cases, in Krasnodar Guitar, also the school showed very bad results, but there we were able to make a sale very quickly to a current partner from Sevastopol, this is her third or fourth school, from the first month 1.3 million rubles. These are very cool metrics, the result. I want to ask you a question summarizing. Yes, did I get it right that we went through all the steps, all the actions, we opened a school, we bought, we made money? No. Next there is a step with an accompaniment called. Wow. You know we have the biggest staff in the team is the support department. It's still like that. It's the people who are contacting the partner on a daily basis about the funnel, key actions, listening to the admin calls, if we need to hold additional meetings with partners. Our permanent Dennis, who has been with us for five or six years, holds meetings all the time. Anton and I also hold planning meetings with our partners once a week. We are constantly in touch always with each partner, HR, there any counseling and stuff like that. There are semi-annual partner meetings, this year we will have the 10th anniversary partner meeting in Moscow in August. It will be held in Moscow, because it is the largest, but before that we traveled, for example, to Baikal, we traveled to Altai, to Petrozavods. In the Crimea, they were plagues. In the Crimea, just as it was snowing. Yes. And we're studying there. It's a super warm community. You always show up. And we think every time. Oh, my God. Thank God. That we approve partners. Because. When you come over. You want to see them. Hugging. And the support is insane. Still all face the same questions. We're all on the same page. We're on the same page. Working and stuff. Super. We're done in steps. We've opened a school. We've made money. That's really cool. Tell me about it. Please, you have a very big result now and for sure huge, big plans. Could you share with our viewers your plans? What's planned outside of school? What improvements? What's next? The product? You? What do you have planned? Well, in the near future we will scale up as much as possible in children's direction first of all, in vocal and guitar direction, because there is still a lot of things not open there. We want to turn the market of children's education upside down because it is still all the same boring in music, and interesting. There remains a format where the child is chosen, which for us is generally, well, that is, you come to the music school, unacceptable. Yeah, and they tell you that you have no hearing. And we don't do that, we accept everyone. We have cases where we have taught deaf-mute children with different disabilities, autistic children and so on. And we want the whole music market to start making products cooler, by an order of magnitude, more fun, because everybody's going to want to either be out of school and you're able to compete with us, well, or we're going to be alone in the market. How do we realize that the child has achieved some outcome? We're doing a huge musical. On this musical each child has his own role, has his own costume, the parents there wrap themselves up, someone sews it themselves, someone orders it everywhere. We put them in big groups, big teams. They all come together, a large number of people, 30 to 50 people, they all go on stage and play a full-blown big musical. That's just cool. They have comics like this. They have parts that are already printed. Yes, and part of. Let's say every week you don't have it. To recognize it, you have to do a musical task and you tape it up and you realize what was there next. And you put the whole, well, whole book together like that, and you end up with the last, well, the whole story in its entirety. We did the last two on purpose, short, completely empty. You don't know what the finals are going to be. For each season, we write the script from scratch completely. We take some story, some plot, and out we go. We think of the characters that will be there, what they will have, what problems they will have, and so on. On the script, we do the voiceover. All the people who sit in this room, the faculty, yes, in this building, they all gather for two hours. We give them a voiceover, give it to a videographer. The videographer starts finding all these characters that are there in the comic book and so on. Making cartoons for 12 episodes. We're making a comic book based on these 12 cartoons. From the comic books there, we make it into stickers and give it all out to the schools. Subtitle editor A. Zanetsky.